Did you know that NCLEX is changing? Now, this might not be for you, but NCLEX is changing and you need to pass now or be prepared for the changes. And I'm doing a series specifically to help you be prepared for the changes or more importantly, pass the NCLEX now. So let's just go over exactly how NCLEX is changing in this new segment. We are going to look at the mechanics of the next generation NCLEX. So here I'm talking about what is going to be the format that the questions will be presented in. You may be happy to know one through five may be kind of familiar to you. So starting with number one, the next generation NCLEX will continue to be a computer adaptive test. Woof. We already know how these work and we already understand how the benefits are for the public. So computer adaptive testing is still alive and well on the next generation NCLEX. Now the test items um, what is familiar is the number of pretest items. However, what is new is the range of your minimum to maximum. So a minimum of 85 questions could be your goal, but be prepared to take a maximum number of test items at 150. And again, 15 of these items are not gonna be scored and no, unfortunately, you do not know which items are considered to be the pretest. So in the 85 questions, there are point number three, 70 that are actually graded towards your passing standard. And the 70 graded questions are broken down into two categories. The first is our case studies. Yep, we've been talking about it. So every student will encounter three next generation case studies. And even though you are getting three case studies, because there are six items in each case study, you will get a total of 18 case study questions, right? So once you encounter a case study, that means that six questions that you get will all be about one patient or one situation. So that is gonna happen to you three times. So you see how important it is when I do a case study workshop that you be present. Now, the next questions um, that you will get are considered standalone items, meaning that everything that you need to know about that patient will be presented in a one question presentation. And so that's pretty cool too. You can get 52 of those. Now, in addition, because the test goes up to possibly 150 questions, you will be able to encounter 65 other standalone items. This means that I'm not expecting you to get any more case studies, um, but these items will be just straightforward new next generation NCLEX style questions. So 10% will be the standalone items of a trend or a bow tie. And remember, I talked about the bow tie questions and how unique that they were in their presentation. So um, be prepared for those. And a beautiful 90% will be knowledge items used to test client needs. So that's not a real surprise there because the NCLEX exam is about whether you can identify what your client is asking. Hey, the total time that you can get will be five hours. Now, these can be five long hours or these could be five short hours, but in any amount, it is going to be a five hour exam. So let's do uh, something for my visual learners. If that wasn't clear enough, I'd like to do an actual comparison table so that you can see what we are going to be transitioning into in April. And I'm so excited of 2023 because literally it is coming so fast. So for the current NCLEX exam and next generation NCLEX, we both will have a computer adaptive test format. Great. 
the number of items is going to skew a little bit to the positive, meaning more items. So right now, there is a 70 to 145 range. And for next generation, it will be 85 to 150. And I'm expecting this for RNs and PNs to have the same number of questions. Woo! The test allotment is going to be five hours in duration. Do you have five hours to get your nursing license? I know that you do. I absolutely know that you do. Let's talk about how these questions are presented to you. What are you gonna encounter? So for the current NCLEX, you guys know we have multiple choice, mm -hmm. multiple response. You have some drag and drop. You can have some hotspot, audio, graphics, and exhibit. Well, for the next generation NCLEX, all of those previous items are available but also expect enhanced hotspot, extended multiple response, extended drag and drop. So we're talking about up to 10 options, closed style questions, constructed responses, matrix grid, and bow tie questions. So how about the scoring? Well, right now you guys know that items are either scored as correct or incorrect there is no partial credit but did you know for next generation there will be uh three three ways that you can receive points towards your passing standard and that is the zero one scoring the plus minus scoring and the rationale scoring which i will be going over in detail my next presentation on the next generation NCLEX. but how about we do this let us look let me introduce a next generation sample question type and again for the many people who are asking when will these things be regina uh this is coming april 2023 so here's a question for you check it out a 34-week pregnant woman experiencing difficulty of breathing is admitted with severe HELP syndrome. External monitoring shows a fetal heart rate of 110 beats per minute with decreased fetal activity. For the following possible interventions, categorize each intervention as anticipated non-essential or contraindicated in the client's case. Okay, so we have a woman here, shortness of breath, and she also has HELP syndrome. This is a syndrome that is a complication that is typically associated with what condition? You gotta know it, this is all about content. You are not going to be able to pass next generation NCLEX if you do not know content. And I'm telling you guys, you're not going to find content in question banks. You're going to have to study, right? And I am here to help you to do it. So um, again, HELP syndrome is typically associated with uh, preeclampsia, right? And so with HELP syndrome, you have not only are you going to have um, a woman who is pregnant, right? Typically a little bit further along in her pregnancy, but not quite in a range for a healthy delivery. But this woman is also going to have hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, right? And low platelets. That is what HELP syndrome stands for. So think about what is actually happening to your patient. And then what next generation NCLEX is going to have you to do is um, analyze the, the cues and then you're going to need to know how to take action because these are possible interventions that the nurse would be carrying out right or would be assisting in and some of them make sense and some of them don't make sense right some of them are anticipated some of them are non-essential and then some of them just don't make sense they're totally contraindicated for the client's case. So let's break down each possible intervention. And I want you to tell me, is it relevant or is it not to help syndrome with a woman who is presenting with difficulty of breathing? I love to see what you guys do with this. So let's start with cortical steroid therapy. 
hmm, why are we going to and eh, why are we going to be either expecting this or not expecting this what is the indication when you think of cortical st- steroid therapy well, who is that to help well who is the cortical steroid therapy to help um indication wise is it for the mom is it for the baby could it be for both is it something that would be uh non-essential or contraindicated in any way for help syndrome what about a blood transfusion and what would be the blood what, what would be the the reason why a woman with help syndrome would need a blood transfusion think about it think about the things that we just talked about that we would see is this going to be anticipated non-essential or contraindicated meaning we should not do this at all oxytocin administration well we know this is a pregnant woman and typically we are uh, we are thinking of oxytocin when it comes to pregnancy. That's literally the only time NCLEX probably is going to ask you a question about it. So would you expect this to be um, a non-essential and anticipated or contraindicated? Gotta love the left side lying position. I mean, to be honest, if you see this on your NCLEX exam, know that this is more than likely going to benefit your mother. Like It's more than likely going to benefit your patient who is pregnant so would you say anticipated non-essential or contraindicated i love these questions i really do i love next generation NCLEX already because it just creates a very reasonable and safe dialogue within yourself as a nurse oral glucose tolerance testing Mm, interesting this is a very interesting one think about why we do this Right, And if this is going to be an action or intervention, you would be ready to carry out right now. And then premature delivery. Again, we are pressing into HELP syndrome and I'm trying to guide you guys thinking to what is anticipated, non-essential or contraindicated. So I see, I see what you guys are thinking in, in terms of Regina, how do I prepare for this? Regina, it doesn't make sense if I think this way or not think this way. So let's just go over it. So cortical steroid therapy is actually going to be anticipated. And again, it's not so much about um, the, the actual cortical steroid therapy, but it's knowing how it is related to HELP syndrome, right? Because we can use cortical steroid therapy for many conditions, right? Um, So how would we apply it to help syndrome? Well, this could actually help the baby, right? Who may not have the lung development needed to have a successful transition to the external world. So we would give the cortical steroid therapy to the baby. And if the mom is having difficulty breathing, Maybe the cortical steroid therapy would also benefit the mom in her difficulty breathing too. So in either event, I'm going to anticipate this intervention. A blood transfusion. Absolutely, I would be thinking about a blood transfusion for this patient. Why is that? Well, again, if we understand HELP syndrome, if we understand HELP syndrome, we know the low platelets we need to address any forms of anemia, right? Any forms of um, blood irregularities in this patient. Blood transfusions are quite common as an intervention for HELP syndrome. Oxytocin administration. Now this is something that we would not want to administer to this patient we would not want to administer to this patient. We would not want this mother to um, begin labor without us being properly prepared. There are probably, oh my goodness, so many things that would prevent you maybe from right away administering oxytocin. So that would be contraindicated. Again, the left side lying position, you gotta love this because this is going to allow more oxygen to get to the fetus and so there is no issue with our mom doing a left side lying position. 
that sideline position. Mm, oral glucose tolerance testing, although it is beneficial in this actual moment here, it is non-essential. And this is what's gonna be very challenging for uh, nursing students, I believe, is separating between anticipating and non-essential. Because non-essential doesn't mean wrong, it just means not right now. <laughs> not right now. And that's very important in practice because you don't wanna get caught up doing something that actually delays a more needful treatment to a patient. So that is going to be why oral glucose tolerance testing right now is non-essential. The premature delivery of the baby, that is anticipated. I don't necessarily want it to be through the oxytocin administration. Catch that though. But I am expecting that if the mother is having uh, decompensation, if she's having a diff difficult time managing herself and she has severe help syndrome, we need to we need to address the real issue which is i like to say this the issue is the baby but not so much the baby what is the issue with help syndrome that is defective most of the time and i asked you all to really think about knowing and getting familiar with your content the issue with help syndrome is the placenta Okay? And so by delivering a, a baby prematurely, you actually allow the mother to do well because you're getting rid of the placenta. So the baby no longer has the placenta, the mother no longer has the placenta, and she is able to, um, she's able to recover at, in, a, in a faster rate than carrying out a normal pregnancy, which would allow her to have that placenta longer. So. Again, deep diving into this content is going to make these questions so much more manageable. And I got time to do this with you. All right. So if it's not for you, I get it. But if you are interested in learning more about this presentation, along with many others, stick right here with Remar. Right. Be prepared now to pass NCLEX or be prepared for next generation. Those are the two options that you have, no matter if you are watching this, um, you know, at any point in time, you, you have to be knowledgeable and you have to be anticipating, anticipating these future changes. However, I will say this, right now is the best time and opportunity to pass your NCLEX exam. If you are able to test this year, I'm gonna be very clear, do it. Do it and keep this in mind you may already have uh, you already may have a goal of what you want to do but I'll show you I'll show you how to pass and prepare for your boards in the next four to six weeks or less with my NCLEX virtual trainer with my NCLEX virtual trainer so the goal behind what I do is for you to get your nursing license as soon as possible as soon as possible. So I'm, of course, I'm learning about next generation. I'm gonna be preparing students for it, but if you don't have to take it, I say pass now or prepare for the changes. Pass now or prepare for the changes. And as always, you can, you will, you must pass in Clex because with God, it is sure enough possible.